Hello, and welcome to the Cardboard Coat Check, the Tabletop Bellhop Live unboxing show. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge. I am here tonight to open up a copy of Stuffed Fables from Plaid Hat Games, a game by Jeremy Hawthorne that is the follow-up to The Amazing Mice and Mystics. Now, I picked up the copy of this game for my kids for Christmas, and I'm looking forward to playing it this Family Day weekend. But I gotta open it and punch it before then, so I figure why not show you guys what's in this box. So here we have the box, Stuff Fables, amazing art. I gotta say, I love the art on the cover of this box. You can kinda see it, it's got a glossy nature to the, the characters, which I know is reflecting pretty bad. Standard sized board game box. So we're going to open this up and show you what's inside. I have not seen this myself. All I have done is remove the shrink wrap. So here we have a rule book and a lot of glare. I will try to minimize the glare. There we go. Rule book. We'll take a look inside that. Full color. Looks like lots of nice art. I do apologize. My camera does not like white on white very well. Oh, I love the art. Check that out. That's nice. So we have a rule book. I'm going to flip the end tell you how many pages this is. So we have a 15-page rule book. Uh, it's worth noting that this is um, a Plaid Hat game, but it is published by Fantasy Flight Games, which uh, once Asmodee bought them out. So besides the rule book, we have a bunch of other stuff here. We have a Read Me First that says, This is not the Discovery Deck. Do not rearrange or look through these cards, etc. A whole bunch of warnings. Warning sheet. Then we have some cardboard. Then we have a punch sheet that that cardboard came out of, obviously. Not a lot. Not a lot of cardboard here. There's another, the other side. Same sheet, other side. Then we have a rather shiny spiral bound book nice thick cover again fantastic art text looks three column text a little small i don't really want to spoil anything but one of the tricks i know in this game is that this is the board that this is how you play you open up this book you put this book out on the table this is your board you can see a grid on it obviously a kid's bedroom again you are playing stuffed animals trying to protect your child in this game so I don't want to spoil anything or go any further, but I notice you can kind of see, let's see if you can see this. There are QR codes. So I don't know if there's an app that it just read to you or I don't think it's an app-based game. I think the app's completely optional, but there are QR codes. I really don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to show you more of that book, but I will show off just how impressively thick it is. Look at that. That's, that's a good half inch at least. Nice spiral bound. Uh, supposedly lays flat, which makes sense because it's spiral bound. So that's that same map. That looks like it's going to lay pretty flat on the table. Unfortunately, I don't have a table here to show you. All right, what do we got next? So there's what we see in the contents next. Biggest thing, obviously, is that Piggle character. So we're going to open this up. We got character sheets. Got lots of character sheets. Oh, man, they're cute. So six different characters. Oh, let's do this. Hopefully you can see this. We are getting way too much glare. Let me try turning this light around. Way better. There we go. So we have Piggle, Stitch, Redora or Theodora, Lumpy. Oh, it looks sad. Lionel looks angry, and Flops. So those are the character sheets. You can kind of see some more what's in here. I'm just gonna pull stuff out. We have a cloth bag, pretty standard. We have a ton of these sixes in very bright colors. Can't really see the bag very well. I'll grab a handful of these. I'll hold those up. Handful of these sixes. Standard these sixes with pips. 
Ooh, buttons. Very cute. Don't know exactly what they're for, but cute little plastic buttons. There, they already beat out patchwork for cool components. We have a handful of buttons. Try to get a blue one in front. You might be able to see a little better. You have buttons. Very neat. Impressed by the buttons. Before I lose one, I'm putting them back in the bag. Miniatures! I've heard the miniatures in this game are impressive, and it will wow. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. Check that guy out. Come on, camera. You can do it. Focus on the robot guy. All right, refuse to work, camera. There's some mean-looking wizard. Ooh, robot-looking dog. One of the characters. Another mean-looking person. More robot dogs. I'm not going to pull all these out. Here, I'm going to grab this one because it's big, chunky. Ooh, looks mean. Mean-looking guy. All right, a whole bunch of miniatures in here. Very impressed. Um, I know it's just noticed some have square bases, so I don't know what the difference means, but you got the robot dog both on a square and a round base. Maybe a way to tell them apart. Cool. All right, next up, oh, we have our lots and lots of cards, which I don't know if I brought a knife in here to be able to open these, so we will see how well they open. So we have a whole bunch of cards. Fantasy Flight with a lot of cards. Though not many tokens, only one punch sheet. I'm slightly surprised there's, there's only one sheet of punch outs. Fantasy Flight usually includes way more than that. Yeah, of course, I did not get a knife ready to do this and I'm having a hard time opening the cards. All right. So we have a whole bunch of cards with these backs. Then on this side, Looks like they have bad guy stats. We got Crawly Darkheart. No, I actually have no idea. Crawly Darkheart. We'll show off a couple. Crawly. Oops, sorry. Hit my bell. Darkheart. And so on. Then we got a bunch of cards with this back. Those have water, fire, hiding spots, walls, so probably terrain rules. So here example, here is the water card. And here's a ra another random card, fire. Then we got sleeping girl cards. These backs. And well, it says sleeping. There are a whole bunch of cards that say sleeping. Uh, then there's restless and waking. So it's got to be the state of your kid that you are trying to protect. The rest of this pile are these cards. And the card on top is Ticking Toy Bomb. It looks like you make choices. So it looks like there's a which, which way aspect to the game. All right, that's one set of cards. There's more. See if I can get this one opened a little quicker. I see some rule reference sheets already. Reference sheets are always good. You know, companies use these quick open things, but they don't always work. All right. So again, we have rule reference cards. Cool. Always good. Just talking about those on our Express Check-In episode. Then we have a whole bunch of clue cards, item art cards. No, no. Here's the back. Here's an example. A wrench. The wrench card. A lot of text on these cards. So playing this with kids, you got to make sure they can read or you're going to be reading to them. Which will be interesting. Both my girls are at reading level, but my youngest does have some difficulty. It'll actually be good to see how well she can do. So this is the discovery deck, it says, for story one. Hey, that one worked well. 
Now, it warns you not to look through the Discovery deck, so I don't think I want to show this off. So, I don't know. It's got this on the back, but I don't know if they all do. This says Story 1. I don't want to flip this open just in case. And then we have one last set of cards, and we have hobbit size cards. Not a big fan of hobbit size cards, but hey, whatever. And I just lost something. Hopefully nothing vital to the game. Grab that later. So we have hobbit size cards. They all have the same symbol on this side. And it looks like they're status effects. So it says worried with a bunch of text. And then we have worried, scared, angry, torn, Skrilla's mark. No clue. So that is it. That is all we have in this box. So not a lot to show off. Some really awesome miniatures. Typical, terrible Fantasy Flight box insert. Look at that. Oh, look at those cards getting all mixed up. No baggies. No way to sort this stuff uh, on that. Sorry. Come on, nowadays, give me some baggies at least. Give me some way to organize these components. Now, other than that, minor complaint. Extremely impressed by these miniatures. Really, like these are nice, really nice minis. Really impressive. Ah, it's just won't focus on the detail. Anyway, really impressive miniatures, lots of dice. Interesting looking rule book. I love the way it lays flat. I gotta say it looks good. I have heard fantastic things about this game. I have heard that it is way better than Mice and Mystics. I am looking forward to finding that out. Now you can find out my thoughts on this once we play it by heading over to tabletopbellhop.com where you can read about this game and other games. We do a week in review on every Monday where we will talk about the games that we played. Uh, you can also find us everywhere on the web as Tabletop Bellhop One Word. Uh, if you are watching this right now on YouTube, it would be awesome if you hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate it. So that has been Stuff Fables, a tabletop bellhop unboxing, or as I think we're going to call it now, the cardboard coat check. If you have any questions about the game or this unboxing, hang around in our chat room and ask away. I'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions. Other than that, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night and game on.